Selamat siang, hari ini kita akan menghadiri guest lecture dengan Dr. Ruben Sakrabani yang acaranya akan disiarkan langsung di www.unia.asia.id Silahkan menonton langsung, kita serahkan kepada pembawa acara Sekali lagi kami beritahukan kepada Bapak dan Ibu yang telah hadir untuk menempati tempat di depan yang telah disediakan karena acara akan segera kami mulai. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen The Honorable, the Doctoral Network Lead Cranfield University The Honorable All Lectures University of Chamber And Honorable All Invitation and Participants of this guy's lecture Thanks to the God who has given us mercy and blessing Until we can gather to the event Guest lecture and sharing international publication by Dr. Ruben Sakrabani, Friday, 19 May 2017. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the first agenda is guest lecture by Dr. Ruben Sakrabani with Mr. Sony Sisbudi Harsono as a moderator. To Mr. Sony Sisbudi Harsono, the stage is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Miss, Mas, Miss Ceremony, not Master Ceremony, Miss Ceremony, MC. Oke, okay, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat siang bagi Bapak Ibu lainnya. Uh, welcome, Dr. Ruben Sakrabani from Cranfield University. It's, Cranfield University is a uh, part of uh, best university in UK. Is uh, the distance from London around one hour around 64 kilometers and the Cranfield is uh, between uh, Oxford and Cambridge universities. It's the long way of uh, Cranfield University in the world. Now it's a uh, basic in research uh, of the environment and food management and others. Also the very important thing is about the uh, aerospace. Today, uh, Bapak Ruben, is uh, actually uh, he comes from Malaysia, he's from Ipoh. You know, Ipoh is close to the KL on south, north. north of KL, Kuala Lumpur, around 60 kilometers. Uh, first, first of all, is uh, thank you, Dr. Ruben. You come here to the chamber. We just met uh, our rector, Pak Hasan, and we discussed a lot about the LPDP program, also IDP projects, and I think the Cranfield University uh, welcome to all staff in UNETS if you want to become a research, researcher there, and also what become a PhD student. And also we discuss about the MSc in Cranfield only 12 months, one year only, in very speed, uh, high speed uh, MSc. I think um, you can inform to your students by LBDP projects, which is very, very good chance. Uh, Dr. Ruben Sagraben is uh, as got a uh, bachelor degree in chemistry in chemistry in U university of kebangsaan malaysia in kuala lumpur and he went to england by evening project by evening award in something like 2000s in leeds university not leeds united but leeds university and she got he got another scholarship 
to study in Scotland and moved to Bradford University. As you know that our colleagues, maybe you remember that all guys here, our colleagues, Pak Sigit Musiko, is part of a friend of him in Bradford in UK in the past. And since 2004, Dr. Ruben is not coming yet to Malaysia. He stay in England as a lecturer in Cranfield University. And she has uh, three children with, with uh, his wife from Madrid, from Spain. Not from Malaysia, but from Spain. Okay, as, uh, today, Dr. Ruben will inform you all about, about the Cranfield University, about research cooperation, and also about Scopus and how uh, the get the uh, impact factor in quartile one. Because I know, as you know, that you can see on the on the Google, yeah, he just uh, published with five, uh, what is it called, five or more than five impact factor. Is it the highest one? So we, he will give you information, all of uh, uh, clue how to get uh, high impact factor. So that's why I, uh, as uh, represent on the streamer, I invite you to be bring uh, your computer and we'll try to make uh, what is called to search how to make a good uh, publication today. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, I will uh, give you time. Uh, uh, this 60 pages, not 16, six zero pages of slides. I please I give you time for you, Dr. Ruben, time for yours. Uh, please, uh, excuse me, can I get internet for Dr. Ruben? Hello? Yes? Okay, uh, so the password, Okay, um, good afternoon everyone. Selamat tengah hari. Is that what you say? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you very much for inviting me to present this work and uh, also to share the information. And uh, I'm very privileged to be here to be able to share some of uh, the things that we do. And, uh, you know, I hope you find this information helpful. If you find that any point anything that I'm saying is not clear, please um, let, let me know and I can try and explain to you a bit better, okay? Right, um, I'm Ruben Sakrabani. Um, I am a senior lecturer in soil chemistry at Cranfield University. I'm Mar Malaysian originally, but I went to England in 1997 uh, to do my master's under the Chevening Scholarship, as was explained by pa Sony. And then I worked for a year, then I got a scholarship to do my PhD in Scotland and then came to England and then uh, I, I got the job uh, that I'm doing now at the moment. So I, I started as a lecturer, lecturer in 2002, but then I was also finishing up my PhD as well at that time. 
Um, I have got several roles at Cranfield University. I'm also the course director for uh, an MSc called Land Reclamation Remediation, and I'm also the uh, lead for the doctoral training network for the theme that, uh, one of the themes at Cranfield, which I'll explain a, a bit more in detail. Can everybody hear me at the back? Yeah, okay. Right. Um, I would like to just cover three main areas of my talk. I will start with uh, introducing uh, who Cranfield is and where we are, because I don't think you might be aware of where we are so well, and I hope you will know more by the end of this talk. I will um, talk a bit about myself, my research portfolio, and then I will talk about the publication High Impact Factor Journals, or publication in general, um, so that you know, it will be hopefully be useful to you. So uh, Cranfield University is a postgraduate only university. We are not very big in size. We are only 4,500 students. Uh, but we are the only postgraduate university in the whole of UK, and possibly one or only one or two uh, of that kind in the whole of Europe. So we only have masters and PhDs. Uh, so we are very specialist, and we work very closely with industry, and also we uh, you know, work, work closely with government organizations and funding bodies. Uh, we pride in three main aspects of our work on transformational research, postgraduate education, as a university we also do teach, and also uh, professional development. In terms of transformational research, the work that we do is linked closely with industry, so industry can use the information that we have gathered to apply, to make products, etc. So it's you know, not research which is just theoretical, but also applied. On the teaching side, we also obviously teach for our master's courses, and for the professional development, we also provide short courses for industry. If you have got a particular area in industry that needs special training, then they also come and come to Cranfield for that training. So we also provide our services in these main, three main areas. Um, so we are not very far from London, as was said by Pak Sony. We are only an hour away. We are uh, between two main cities, Bedford and Milton Keynes. So in terms of communication, it's very easy. And we are also very close to one of the big uh, airports called in Luton, which is more for traveling between uh, European countries. So you know, again, communication-wise, we are very uh, strategic. As I said, we are a, not a very big university. We do not have uh, traditional departments like chemistry, biology, engineering, physics, etc. Because if we were to do that, then there will be too few of us in each department and it wouldn't be financially viable. So we are organized as a university into different themes. And there are eight themes, so that's aerospace, defense, energy, environment, agri-food, which is the theme that I'm in, uh, management, manufacturing, transport, and water. So of these eight themes, it's in each theme there are specialists within that theme working together. So for environment, agri-food, we have got soil scientists, agronomists, chemists, uh, geographical information specialists, statistician, you know, different people from different expertise that come together because the problem in environment agri-food cannot be solved by only one specific discipline. It is cross-cutting and that's how we come together in a cross-cutting way to provide solutions for industry, for research and, you know, for advancing new knowledge. Um, we, within the theme of environment, uh, sorry, within the theme of environment agri-food, we have got different uh, centers. We've got atmospheric emissions as one center, and we've got resilience future, and also um, Cranfield Soil and Agri-Food, which is the institute that I work in, led by Professor Leon Terry. And we've also got links with um, specialist organization like the British Society of Soil Science, which is shown as BSSS. And then the two green uh, blogs you can see is named AgriEpi and CHAPS. These are two agricultural research centers uh, which have, we have got funding from the government for us to work together with industry with very specialist equipments, which I'll explain to you in a minute. So we are um, obviously at Cranfield Environment Agri-Food uh, invests in key strategic areas. 
and our focus is on soil, plant, biology, informatics, ag and uh, supply chain. So we pride in uh, all aspects of uh, food production from seed until harvest, post-harvest, and also what, happen, what happens in terms of marketing and, and obviously distributing. So we pride in you know, the whole supply chain. So we have got lots of funding from uh, the government to have an excellent research facility uh, in excess of 10 million pounds. And we have got a cohort of PhD students, about 50, and we hope to double it by 2019. And we also want to engage very closely with our domestic and also international partners, which is why I'm here. One of the reasons is to work closely with universities like Jember and try to create a, a good working environment. Um, and also, obviously, uh, cutting across different technologies and also increasing our master student portfolio. So um, this is one example where in Environment Agri-Food, you can see towards your left-hand side, the uh, block in green are specialists who are focusing on a plant. So from post-harvest to uh, crop physiology and molecular genetics, etc. The block in brown are people who are soil scientists, but within that you have got um, soil conservation specialists, soil physicists, uh, you know, organic amendments and nutrient management, which is the bit that I do. That's my area of uh, research interest on so soil fertility, looking at resource efficiency. And then you've got soil biologists. And then the block on the right-hand side are people who are working on water, anything with water, irrigation, influence of climate. And then the, the, the block in green are people who are working on informatics, data, how to use geospatial information to manage data that's coming from the environment, agri-food. And then in purple are people who are working with remote sensing, using specialist tools to gather and capture information. And then we also have got uh, international um, um, uh, professional bodies such as the Institute of Agricultural Engineering and also the British Society of Soil Science. And we've got the School of Management. And then in the middle, you've got the two circles, which are the two agricultural technology centers. So these are centers. They are not owned by Cranfield, but one of them is led by Cranfield. But several uh, universities share the facility, and then industry can come to us with a specific problem, and we can use the facilities to provide solutions for industry. So UK wants to become the next leader in agricultural technology, and these centers, one of it is at Cranfield, uh, and the other one we are also actively involved is very key and fundamental to achieving this. So you can see in this way where different components of people with different expertise are coming together to provide a very uh, united approach to uh, trying to tackle and uh, provide solutions in this area. Okay? Is everybody following me? Is that clear so far? Yeah? Okay. If too fast, let me know, okay? Right, this is just one example of facility that we, we do not have this, but we have something similar to this. So this is a photo that's sh uh, showing of a wheat crop that is growing. And then the bridge-like structure that you see, the gantry system, is basically has got under there a box, which you can see on the right-hand side. And in this box, there are some cameras and sensors that actually can help to monitor the growth of the plant as the plant is growing. So you don't have to dig the plant out. So you put the plant when it's in a seed, and then you get the plant out when it's harvested. But the gantry system will go to and fro, to and fro, computer controlled, taking images and pictures of the different growth phases of a plant. In this case, it is um, wheat. So we have something similar to this, but we have it in a glass house. So you can see the glass house. This is at Cranfield University. So in that glass house, inside, there's this bridge-like structure called the gantry system with uh, these cameras. So because it's a glass house, you can grow anything um, other than just weed. So we can then also look at how we could use crops which are relevant to other parts of the world, because in the glass house, it's more controlled. And then we can again use this scanning and sensor approach to look at crop growth, crop physiology, and try and um, man, um, compare that with 
how the soil properties are changing so that we can get the link between the two. Okay? And on the bottom here, you have got growth, growth rooms. So these, one, we have got about four growth rooms, and each growth room is about a quarter the size of this auditorium. Yeah? So all you have to do is just walk in, and it's got temperature, it's got uh, humidity, all controlled. So we can even grow cocoa for you if you want, or coffee if you want, in controlled environment, not outside, where, for example, these are crops which are of importance to you here. So if you are looking at your field experiments that you have here, but if you want to do something more specific under controlled environments, we can even do that. So, you know, this is just an opportunity to use such facilities. I would not advise, advise growing cocoa outside of this, because the cocoa plant will probably die in England, but inside, you know, you might be able to, you know, get hopefully some useful results. Okay, so this is just the new facilities. And these are all part of the agricultural technology centers that we have. And this is just showing a further example. So in this uh, specialist agricultural cent uh, technology centers, uh, we are able to follow the crop from tillage until post harvest and then repeat it again. So uh, w you can see this is the crop cycle of a wheat, for example, from seed till post harvest. We are able to look at how we can prepare the land, sow the seed, monitor the crop growth, harvest the crop, and use the same soil to plant again, as if what will happen in the real world, but under control environments. Okay. So let me show you an example. That's why I've got this circle from tillage till post harvest and then back again. So what, I'm sh what I mean by this is, if you look at the right, uh, the leftmost uh, diagram, there's a big box. It's basically a one cubic meter box. So it's one meter in length, one meter in depth, one meter in height, and we call this the soil monolith. So it's filled with soil, okay? So in that soil monolith, you will plant your crop. But then you can see uh, there are one, two, three, four boxes in the middle. So you can, you can put these soil boxes next to each other. And then there are actually some holes in the between. You can actually remove them. So you can prepare the land. You can prepare the soil in, as if you're preparing the land. And then you can plant the crops. And then you can grow them. And then you can actually separate the boxes. So some of the boxes, you can put them in the growth room to grow under control environments. Some of them, you can take them to the glass house because this growth room is located next to the glass house. So you use a forklift and take it from the growth room to the glass house, monitor the growth using these cameras, and then you can take it out to do some other erosion experiments if you think that's necessary. And then once the crop is harvested, you can use the same box plant it the next time around and repeat the whole cycle. So it's not that it's only you use the soil once, because in the real world, the farmer uses the same land again and again and again. So we can repeat that, that situation in a controlled environment to look at mechanisms and how certain factors influence you know, soil properties, etc. So this is a very unique facility that we have at Cranfield. And this is exactly the sort of things you want to work with yourselves. So there are some people obviously working behind these scenes. So these are the group of uh, colleagues that I work with. So we, uh, uh, on regarding to soil health and fertility and soil physics, chemistry and biology. So you can see in the top, you've got the list of professors. And then in the second row, there's uh, one of the uh, senior members is myself and a colleague and then followed by more junior supporting staff and, and research and postdocs. So we also have got other uh, 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 complementary skill sets from other colleagues in remote sensing and in water and irrigation, etc. So all working together in a very collective and cohesive manner. So I want to show you some example of how industry, this is very UK focused, but it can also be applied to Indonesia and any other part of the world if you want to. So for example, if you have got issues with organic matter structure, you, if you, you can look at how in this control uh, lysimeters, you can look how